guys hear me? Oh, I really don't think I need this thing. Uh, I'm glad to be here. My name is R.W. Gray. Uh, it's amazing because it's not often you come across an African American Republican, right? Like seeing one is like seeing a unicorn. <laughs> it, it, it seems like every time I go to speak somewhere and I tell my women on a Republican ticket, I get a lot of Twitter hits. I'm like, oh God, so another, another person is following me, another person is following me. It's amazing because we live in a, in a new time. And I think that's what makes speeches like this so important. Because the new time is right in front of me. The new age of leaders, of hope, of opportunity are the people we're seeing in this room right now. And so what, what do you tell a group of individuals who you're trying to promote to be civic minded? That's hard. It's very difficult. But I'm going to make it easy for you because I'm not too far removed. I, um, I'm not from Texas. I'm from Louisiana. I'm from the South. I'm from the dirty, as we say, right? And, uh, and I don't plan on going anyplace else. But ultimately, I was, uh, I was ran out of my hometown, which was normal. And I came to Texas. I came to Texas with nothing. I lost everything in Katrina. And I had to go back because I'm also in the United States Air Force. The moment I evacuated, a day later, I was getting a call from my commander to go back. So for a month, I, uh, I participated in search and rescue. Uh, pulling out the bodies of residences that I love. For uh, four months, I rotated through ICU and ER, and it broke my heart to see what they came through. But I realized this though, that experience taught me two things. There's no substitute for hard work, and the government will not take care of it. I lived in an area in New Orleans where most of the individuals that lived in New Orleans somewhere and somehow were either working for the government, enslaved to the government, or working with the government, 78% of New Orleans are the Indians were somehow invested in the government. And many of them that were invested were the same ones that were pulling out of the waters. I learned something that day and hoping that I will say something today that will engage you to remember that. That you don't have to go through hard times. You can learn from other people's hard times. And you can save yourself a boatload of mistakes. Why am I Republican? I started reading uh, certain books that motivate me. And in the African American community, um, that's pretty difficult as far as Republican ideologies are concerned. But I started reading Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass. Uh, I fell in love with William Lord Garrison, who was a white abolitionist. John Brown, a white man who gave his life for an anti-slavery movement. And so it motivated me to dig deep. And these are the three E's I want you guys to keep in mind. Once again, I'm not too far removed from college, right? Um, these three E's are paramount. The first one is education. Why is education so important? In Texas, out of every hundred, College students. 79 will choose to go to a community college. 79. Two year college. In two years, only two will have graduated. Only two. Those 79 that chose to go to, with the 21 that chose to go to a four year college, after four years, only five will have graduated. And if you gave them 13 more years to go, only 13 would have graduated. That's college students. It's past now we start redefining what education means, especially for this new generation. Dan hit it on the head. And I'm not just saying it's not Republican. We have to start redefining education because the bottom line is that there are a group of individuals that just got cut off for college. They just don't want. And when you see examples like, like millionaires, who step away from college to pursue a dream, you can't argue. And there are entrepreneurs even now that do the same. But also there are individuals who are good at working with their hands. 
Baytown just broke ground. They were looking for 800 to 1,000 workers. They employed somewhere around 200. What did they lack? Men with skill set. Men with skill set. Average price winner in Baytown was making 35 an hour. If I actually want to make 35 an hour, I bet a lot of hands would go up. Let me tell you this. The average college grad coming out four years is making 46000 a year. You can be a pipe fitter and make more than a college grad. My generation was sold a lot. We were under the uh, belief that maybe if we get four years of college, then we'll come out making 70000 80000 a year. We had big hopes. We were wrong. We're not going to sell that lie to you. There are no guarantees coming out of college. And if you can be a fighter that are raising your family, making $35,000 an hour, you can put yourself to school at night. And here's the amazing thing. You finish in five or six years, you finish with no debt. Average four-year college grad is indebted to student loans for 180 months. 180 months. So we got people like Dan trying to make sure tuition is a skyrocket. Because everyone thinks that our, our pockets are full, right? But they're not. We work on a budget. And you guys have the opportunity to kind of redefine who you want to be, what you want to do, and don't leave anyone except your own dream. That's redefining education. Because the young man that can raise his family making $35 to cross five pipeline and still put himself through college is just as successful as a four-year grad. Keep in mind, what like I said, only five finish in four years. Here's the second thing. Entrepreneurship. And I'm not just talking about business entrepreneurship, I'm talking about social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship, meaning individuals who have a tenacity about themselves to come up with answers outside of the box that will heal their communities. Not the status quo. I'm talking about individuals like yourself that are 30 and under with ideas that have nothing to do with how your family thinks, right? If you're under 20, you're under 30, you're not thinking like a 60-year-old. If you're under 40, you're not thinking like a 60-year-old or a 50-year-old. You have your own ideas. And America is always growing. It's always changing. Let's face it, 30 years, I wouldn't have been here. A hundred years ago, they would look at me like I was a moron and booted me out. America is changing. And with that change means as entrepreneurs, we have to focus on the things that matter most. And social entrepreneurship is one of them. We have a dying, decaying population. Not only socially, but morally. We need women, strong women who will come up with the answers of counseling and assistance to help out failing women who don't have all the resources that come from social entrepreneurs. People who create answers instead of always barking about the problems. That comes from this generation. Trust me, it's not ours. It comes from this one. And of course, business entrepreneurs. We're not all going to finish education, but I tell you, here's the deal. And you guys will probably agree with me. One of the best examples is Facebook. One of the best, best examples is, is, uh, is the richest man on, on earth. Look, if, if, if you have to step out of college in order to come up with an answer that will heal social wounds, I'm all for it. I'm sure Gates is not regretting what he did. Right? I'm sure Bill Gates is not sitting back, chilling in his thinking, oh, if only. No, he's not. He stepped out on faith. We glorify NBA stars who drop out of college and make millions, but we don't glorify individuals who come up with answers to drop out of college and give a social answer to a dying community. We need to redefine what success is. One reason, one reason why we have colleges is to help fuel your education so that you are not stifled with your knowledge. And that's why we're here. Civic engagement is imperative to your future. And you can ignore it like it doesn't affect you. The truth is, is that many people are giving you debt that you will never get out of. 
unless you stop them now. You tell them, I don't want your debt. You have the ability to stop it if you go out and vote. And they're betting that you won't because they're betting that you don't care enough. And so let's talk about how you care. And that's the last thing. And that's energy. I mean that physically, and I mean that socially. Socially, what I mean by energy is that we have to ignite a fire in ourselves as Americans. As a veteran, that's, that's, not, that's not hard for me. Because I can look at the crowd right now and I can be reminded every day of what I'm fighting for. It's not hard for me. Because I can look at a college student with a kid and I can be motivated, right? Because if he can go to school and raise a family, then I can go and fight to make sure that that young man has a future. And I can die. I'm grateful that I did something, something outside of myself. That's energy. That's energy that I can pass on to you from this stand, and it's the energy that you guys can pass on in the future. But there's also another point of energy I want to talk about. And that's the energy corridor that stretches from Pasadena to Baytown in my district. With thousands of new jobs, thousands of new opportunities that no one is telling you about. We have legislators who knows about it. Knows about shell breaking ground, eggs all looking at to come. These things are imperative to our growth. And they will offer us jobs. And that's powerful. But it's not just powerful because it will offer us jobs. It's also powerful because it will offer us an opportunity to become job creators. Which I hope I'm talking to a few of them here. Because we can't all just go out and get jobs. Some of us have to look out for the person next to them and create a, create a job opportunity for the next individual. You have a dream, you create a company, and you employ. Contrary to popular belief that you hear on TV, the government does not create jobs. That is a falsehood. Individuals like yourself, with ingenuity and growth and belief, those individuals make jobs. And then they hire other individuals to make it happen. And let me tell you, when that person does that, they do build it. Let me give you an example. Little Bobby is, is, is walking down the street. Little Bobby's broke. He comes up with an idea. Mr. Rogers' grass always looks unkempt. Let me go and offer my services to Mr. Rogers. So little Billy goes over. It's Mr. Rogers. Your, your yard is always unkept. Would you like me to rake it? Mr. Rogers says, yes, you can rake it. But little Billy has no rake. So little Billy says, okay. Let me go to Tommy, because I know Tommy's dad has a rake. He goes over to Tommy. Tommy, can I borrow your rake? Yeah, you can borrow my rake. Thank you. Tommy has no clue what he's going to do with it, but he's just grateful that he can give his friend a rake. He takes the rake, goes over, rakes up Mr. Rogers' yard, goes back to Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is going to your yard. Mr. Rogers gives him 10 bucks now. Boom. Billy has $10 in his pocket. Little Susie comes over and says, Hey, hey, did you just rake that yard? Give me a dollar. I was like, what do you mean? Give you a dollar. I did this myself. No, 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 no. You borrowed a rake from your friend. Yeah, but I raked it. Yeah, but you used another resource. Does that mean that he didn't rake the yard because he used the resource that he had? No. It means that he was, he was, he was smart. He came with an idea. And there are people that come with ideas all the time. And just because I go to him because he's a manufacturer and I can grab something from him to build what I believe in and make it happen, doesn't mean that I didn't build it. I built it. And you guys are encouraged to build something today. And it's more than just your own personal future. It's a future for America. It's the reason why Dan wears a tie. Right? The reason why veterans wear flags. Because we're Americans. It's what we do. It's how we were born. So in closing, let me just show you this. Legislation is difficult. It's, it's basically a bunch of guys and females who think that they have all the answers, right? And then they do that, they don't. And then, people like yourselves hire the guys because you think, well, you sound smart, let me put them in it. 
So in, in Texas legislature, there's, there's 150 House members, and then you have, you have 31 um, senators. And I, I'm fighting to be one of those 31 senators. Now before 1913, I only had one job, and that is to stay food. After 1913, it all changed, and Texas kind of followed suit with the U.S., and now you have senators who are actually proposing bills and spending money, making it even harder for the House reps. But that's the commons, and that's how the commons works. Here's the thing, though. We haven't seen an African-American Republican in over a century and a half. We haven't seen an African-American Republican senator since the reconstruction of Texas. We have to change. We have to grow. And this, this election is about growth for 2012. This is why he's doing this. I have to believe that he's doing it because he realized the gravity of this election. And it's not just the presence of people. Pay attention all the way down the ballot. Remember God's like that. Let me tell you, that man's going to make sure that the answers are there. Remember guys like R.W. Bray, some young guy that spoke loud, right? But actually made some sense. And I tweeted him because he was an African American Republican, <laughs> right? It's not far fetched. Opportunity to save America is not far fetched. Pay attention to the whole battle. Stay engaged. Get rested. Do it because we need you. If you are under 20, you will have 40% of your so called social security gone. 2042, you can bank on it. 40% of what you would have received now, it will be gone. You make fun of parents, right? We call it a Ponzi scheme. I didn't make fun of it. Don't bank on it. And I know you're not. So don't. Become an entrepreneur or become a college graduate. Hell bent on making sure that you move up and you make sure that everyone with you move up. Instead of, say, instead of accepting a hand out, be determined that you're going to offer a hand up. And if you do, you're going to have to have some arm to reach out and give to them. So do it quickly. And hopefully you'll start November 6th. Right? Hope I didn't waste your time. Thank you.